the Xiaomi brand doesn't need any introduction these days. Their latest affordable tablet, marketed under the Redmi brand, carries a simple name. It's just a Redmi Pad. In today's video I'm going to show you everything you want to know about Xiaomi Redmi Pad which thanks to its core components represents absolutely fantastic value. We'll discuss the external design and the core components of the Redmi Pad, I'll test the cameras, check the gaming performance and I will show you through the main features of the Redmi Pad and hopefully this video will answer all your questions so stay with me. Hi what's up guys my name is Adam and you're watching Family Pop TV YouTube channel. First, let's check what's in the box. Inside the neat packaging we can find the Redmi Pad itself, a 15 watt standard charger with the USB-C cable, manual and warranty certificates and a little ejector tool. Additionally, you could get a dedicated plastic case and an external keyboard which matching the size of the Redmi Pad. The design of the pad incorporates a precision aluminium unibody enclosure that is strong, light and durable. And the very first thing you'll notice when you lift the pad from its box is the slim body with only 7mm of thickness. It features a rectangular design with straight edges and curved corners which not just look elegant but also efficiently packages the solid technology inside. I'll talk about it in a minute. The pad comes in three color versions, mint green, moonlight silver and graphite grey, which is the model we're reviewing today. At the top edge we can find the speaker grills and the power on off button. The left edge has a discrete micro SD card slot, two microphones and volume up and down buttons. And the bottom edge has another two speaker grills and the USB-C socket to plug the charger, keyboard or external OTG devices such as hard disks. The positioning of the four speakers at the top and bottom edges is ideal to generate surround Dolby Atmos sound, however the sound is fired straight to the palm of your hand and not into the room. At the back we got a primary 8 megapixels camera compartment, it's just out so it might cause the tablet to rock when placed flat on a desk, but it doesn't spoil the overall finish. A 10.61 inch display, please note it's not 10.6 but it's 10.61 inch, adopting a 5 by 3 aspect ratio and it looks very close to the one used in Apple iPads. The display has a small bezel which is just enough to let you hold the pad comfortably in your hands without the risk of accidentally tapping the screen. Xiaomi has taken steps to reduce the bezel to just about perfect size. The overall build quality is very high, these days almost everyone prefers the narrower body both in terms of design and usability. This might be a budget tablet but that certainly isn't given away by its design. As I mentioned earlier Xiaomi has fitted a new 90Hz 10.61 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1200 by 2000 pixels and adopts 5 by 3 aspect ratio. This is a very good quality IPS panel which makes for excellent lifelike colors and very good viewing angles and is also very fluid and the Redmi Pad offers sharp images and clear text. Blacks are pretty good too, with a high contrast ratio and a max brightness of 400 nits that's really not bad for a budget tablet and should make the screen much easier to read in the sunlight. It's not often you'll pick a tablet to use it as a camera. The camera app is basic but it takes really good images and you do get HDR on a variety of filters. This is an example of the photo taken by the 8 megapixel back camera. For comparison, the same photos taken by the latest iPad, can you tell the difference? Let's capture some video. The pad records videos in 4K and 30fps, however there's no image stabilization so the captured material might be a bit wobbly. For comparison, the same video captured by the latest iPad Air. Around the front where you're more likely to take advantage of the camera for video chat is an 8 megapixel selfie camera which allows to record the videos and make video calls in 4K resolution. You can also use this to unlock the tablet using face recognition. 
The Redmi Pad is fitted with a MediaTek Helio G99 processor built on the highly efficient TSMC 6 nanometers. Helio G99 features an octa-core CPU with two high-performance ARM Cortex-A76 processor clocking up to 2.2 GHz and highly capable ARM Mali G57 class GPU. The processor is comparable to Snapdragon 4 Gen 1 and MediaTek Dimensity 700 and its 6 nanometers class enables it to be exceptionally power efficient. The pad comes in three variants, 3GB of RAM and 60GB of storage. This is the most budget version, which is the one I'm testing today. Then there's a 4GB RAM version with 128GB of storage and the highest spec version with 6GB of RAM plus 128GB of internal storage. I would strongly recommend to get the highest spec version and I'll tell you why. Although this is the lowest spec version of Redmi Pad with only 3GB of RAM, in the real world use I found no issues with lags when opening the apps and navigating through the menus. It's actually very fluid. Storage is fine even if you opt in for the 64GB, especially now when you can add a micro SD card up to 1TB in capacity. So with that being said, let's check out how the Redmi Pad performs when playing the most power demanding games currently available. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. I tried one of the best racing games, Asphalt 9 Legends. The image quality isn't the highest, however the fluidity of the game is fine. No dropped FPS, even in a busy moment. Right, next in the queue, one of my favorite shooters, Call of Duty Mobile. I couldn't change the image quality as in the setting there's a low for graphics as default settings. However, the game works without any significant frame drops. It's a bit disappointing because, to be honest, I was expecting slightly better visual performance from that new Helio G99 that everyone's raving about these days. The next in line, this is probably most processing power hungry game of all times, Genshin Impact. I guess the graphic quality and the FPS are the lowest by default, but even now we can notice significant drops in frames. The game gets choppy if there's a load going on. And that's why the extra RAM would be very useful here. No point to play Genshin or other high-end games if you got only 3 gigs of RAM on board. So again, if you're thinking about getting the Redmi Pad, consider the highest spec model and then you won't be disappointed. And what's interesting, this game is being pre-installed on the tab, which implies it's supposed to run great on this machine, but it's just average. And this is exactly what I've just mentioned, 6GB of RAM is the best balance between the cost and performance. Users who want to play the power hungry games or have many different apps open at the same time and want to switch between them quickly or want to use some video editing apps should definitely go for 6GB RAM version. In the Antutu benchmark test, the lowest version of Xiaomi Redmi Pad with 3 gigs of RAM gets a score of 354,841 points which is comparable with the iPhone XR and that's about 3 times less than the latest iPad Air. But let's keep in mind, it's a budget device. Inside this Redmi Pad we got 8000 mAh battery and according to Xiaomi the battery life remains up to 12 hours video playback. During my use, I have managed to record around 10 hours of YouTube streaming, which is close to promised all-day live score. As an illustrative example, I stream YouTube on iPad Air just to see how the Redmi's battery holds up against nearly 4 times more expensive device. As much as I like my iPad, its battery was the only disappointment for me. It died after around 4 hours of streaming, and Redmi Pad is still alive. The Redmi's battery saving modes significantly contributes to the good performance of the battery. Right, it died after approximately 10 hours and the latest iPad Air's battery died after 4 hours. 
In terms of connectivity, the Redmi comes with dual band 2.4 GHz plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.3 on board. And there's no support for a mobile network, no support for NFC for contactless payments. But I'm more surprised by the lack of GPS. It's obviously possible to use apps such as Google Maps, but it uses Wi-Fi scanning to pinpoint your location. The pad runs on MIUI 13 based on Android 12. It has loads of extras you won't find in stock Android, such as dual apps and split or second screen, but the MIUI is very easy to navigate and it's well optimized for the landscape use. There's a dark mode, split screen, floating windows, game turbo, and also there's a virtual expansion of the RAM space. It can reserve additional 1GB of storage to be used as a virtual extension of RAM, which is very useful. The Redmi Pad is an ideal budget tablet for general use, with an attractive design and some competitive hardware on board. It's ideal for streaming YouTube or Netflix or for consuming any visual content thanks to its 90Hz high quality display and Dolby Atmos sound system. If you need an inexpensive device for casual gaming, I would strongly recommend the highest version with 6GB of RAM which also offers 128GB of storage and that's enough to install several games. You can pick up the Xiaomi Redmi Pad on Amazon as well as on AliExpress and there are affiliate links in this video description. Ok guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it pretty informative and useful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss when the next video comes out.